Hey, what's up, you guys? My name is Cyberstorm, and welcome back to LEGO Arts. So, last episode, we did the showcase on the Connor Jericho infiltration minifigure figure as an experiment to test, and to test out with fabrics. Fabrics for minifigures. So now, in this one, since I'm busy, busy like, trying to get some other projects done that, unfortunately, will, uh, will not come until 2019, for this one, I decided to take a trip down memory lane and show you guys... Hey guys, uh, some of the early, some more of my earlier customs that I have made, and that is DC supervillains. And before I continue on, I just want to say, I just want to point out, it's been a while since I said this, but I want to point out these decals that you see here. They are not mine, not mine. They belong, uh, they belong to different people. I will include like the links, links to them in the description below. Give those people credits. They did amazing work, amazing work. I'm just using, uh, I just used the decals to make these minifigures. No more, no less. But anyways. Anyways, uh, these aren't all the DC supervillains I made. These were, uh, this is like a handful of some of the made, of some that I've made. But I decided to go with these ones because they were the ones that I felt like uh, I can do like a then and now sort of thing. Because I feel like I want to change these. I want to do like some changes to them, and so we're gonna go uh, from here. So to showcase myself, uh, we have the Joker, Harley Quinn, Scarecrow, Two Face, Mister Freeze, Poison Ivy, and Deathstroke. It's joke. So, as you guys know the whole drill, we're gonna take these minifigures one at a time, do a review on them, explain this process, why I chose to go with this route, hopefully I can remember, and then go from there. There. And here's a little motivation to keep you guys throughout this video. Anyway, at the end of this video, I will include a teaser, teaser for what I have in store, coming next year for LEGO Arts, so be sure to keep your eyes and ears, eyes and ears open for that. So, without further ado, let's get this showcase on the road! So to start the showcase off, of course, I had to start with one of the best DC villains of all time, the Clown Prince of Crime, the Joker. Now, this one was not the first, first DC villain I customized. I think it might have been the second, maybe third. I don't really remember, like, which particular order I made. I just remember, like, uh, taking one of these minifigures, and at first, I didn't plan on customizing this one, because uh, this one was, like, uh, the first wave in the LEGO DC superheroes show. DC superheroes uh, minifigures, and I liked the original outfit, but I decided to like give it an upgrade because back then it was just like, how about we be fair and share? So with this minifigure, like the suit that he's wearing is supposed to like replicate and uh, represents like the Arkham series because I really really like that series. Uh, the face I kept the same because I really enjoyed the face. He's supposed to have two faces, but the other one, the one is behind and the other clay is behind this clay hair thing, which I will get to in a moment, and so I can't remove that. Okay, that's on the back. There's supposed to be detailing up on there, but the paint that I used, I try to make it like all blend in together, in together, and it kind of works, but at the same time, kind of not. Uh, the gun. This is like a pistol that I had, I had from like a police pack, and I like took this gun and painted it like purple and then added the gold. Like the gun, like from Suicide Squad. That's Squad. I felt that gun felt suited more for Joker. Like he had a Tommy gun, but uh, if you guys remember when I did Bendy Wave. And wave three, I took the Tommy gun and I modified it. And for that showcase. Uh, the hair, though, I'd have to say that this was, like, uh, what I was starting to practice with molding. And with molding clay. They, like, if you guys recall, like, like the first molding clay I used for this stuff, uh, aside from Play-Doh, was, like, this uh, clay. I forgot what brand it was. But uh, it was a kind of clay for where it doesn't dry. And then dry, so it was pretty hard to do. And the hairpiece, I tried to replicate it like, you know, like the Peter Capaldi 12th Doctor hairpiece. It's because I felt like that hairpiece, it felt more Joker, like more than like the current hairpiece that he has now. As now, it's okay, but it kind of makes him look like a businessman, and that's not Joker style. Her style, it's supposed to be looking all crazy, like easy and everything. And that's kind of like why I liked the first versions of like the Lego Batman, Batman sets. We all remember, like, the very first versions, versions, those were pretty cool. So, I decided to, like, try and, like, experiment to see if I could replicate that. And it kind of works, but at the same time, kind of not. So, one of my hopes is to, like, get an actual hairpiece and replace this. It says, so that way it can be, like, a more proper minifigure. But in general, this was actually a pretty interesting minifigure. Minifigure, one of my plans is to, like, go back and add, like, detailing to the suit, detailing to the arms, again, with the hair. The face, I'm gonna keep intact, because... It's really Joker. It really suits him. It's him. And it's not a guarantee, but I might try detailing with the gun. If not, I'll just leave it as it is. But yeah, that's pretty much Joker. So how about we go ahead and move on to our next minifigure? So next up on our list is, of course, Harley Quinn. Nan. And as you can tell by the paintwork on, like, the legs, legs and the back, this was not just the first, one of the first DC villains I've made, but one of the first custom minifigures I ever made. This one was one of the originals. 
Pigeonals, as you can tell by the paintwork on the legs. Oh my god. My god, I definitely plan to update this minifigure so much. So much. But her torso and her face, they're, as you can see, they're based off of, like, the Arkham... Arkham games, I forgot if it's based off of, like, Arkham City or, like, Arkham Origins. Not Origins, sorry. Arkham Knight. Sorry, it's been a little while since I played the game, so it's just like, okay, okay, gotta remember. Uh, the hairpiece was, like, the latest feature that I added, because one of the original... This went through a couple of phases. So the first one, it was, like, classic Harley Quinn, like, classic suits, classic face, the court jester hat. The second phase was the face, just the face and the torso, or so printing, and it... And she had, like, this hairpiece. I don't know how to describe it, but it's, like, one of those hairpieces that's, like, a ponytail. And then there are, like, bangs on the sides of the head. It's one of those hairpieces. And then, like, during one of my visits to... Is it to Brick Fair? Brick Fair. I got a minifigure with, like, the pigtails and chose that for Harley Quinn. Harley Quinn. So, you could clearly tell that this is definitely something that I want to update. And that... Not... Actually, scratch that. Not want to. Need to. Because it's just, like, I can't have this roaming around. Around... And, like, the hammer, hammer, this was, like, uh, like something that I definitely wanted to do. Like, I kind of wanted to do the baseball bat, but back then I wanted to do, like, uh, the giant mallet thing. So, I looked up at, like, the original, like, uh, Batman, uh, Lego Batman, Batman sets, like, to try and get a basic idea as to what, like, the whole mallet would look like. And after finally getting a good photo, like, on the side of the hammer, because on the front of it, it'd be pretty easy. I then, like, uh, searched through my bins to find the right parts. And, yeah, got it, and got it all correctly. So, again, this is something I need to update, update, because I'm not super satisfied with this minifigure, but it's decent enough, like, the front is decent, the rest of it, not so much. So, uh, this is gonna be definitely, like, a remastery, uh, remastered, or reforge, as I like to say, as I say, it's, uh, that you guys will see in the future. But, anywho, how about we just move on to our next minifigure? So, next up on the list is Dr. Victor Freeze, aka Mr. Freeze. And this minifigure had, like, uh, some of the very little, like, uh, customization, because when I first got this one, got this one, it was, like, Wave 2 of LEGO DC Super Heroes. It was a little set of, like, featuring, like, the Bat Boat, or the Bat Sub, whatever it's called now, and, uh, and it had Aquaman, and, like, Arctic Batman suit, and also Mi and Mr. Freeze. I got that set solely to get the Mr. Freeze minifigure, uh, figure. so, like, when looking at this minifigure, you can... S uh, you can tell, like, there are some differences with it, but at the same time, not much. Uh, people really liked this one, like, this Mr. Freeze, like, a lot more than the original, because it's way closer to, like, the Arkham, uh, to, like, Arkham City, and I can see why. Um, so, some differences is just, like, he's holding, like, one of my flamethrower guns that I got here. I'm using it as the freeze gun. I definitely plan to, like, change the gun. Change the gun. Uh, the helmet here is definitely, like, very close to the Arkham games. Names underneath is a decal printing of, like, uh, what's... The suit would look like, look like from those games, and the face as well. I plan to keep the face. The face is very nice, uh, but the rest of it's rest of it. I feel like I can do more uh, on the back. Uh, there's not well, there is printing on the back, but it doesn't match up with the rest of the figure and the face. I decided to keep this face as sort of like a way to like, oh, what if I do like double face sort of thing? Um, now that I think about it, uh, I never really went with that route, so I don't know why I thought about that. Uh, putting this helmet back on, I added, like, these extra stud pieces, like, on the top and bottom, because I kind of felt like, uh, the, the whole idea with Mr. Freeze's suit is that it's supposed to, like, keep, uh, keep, like, all of his, uh, cold in, uh, inside the suit rather than escaping, and, like, the holes in, like, the tank on the back were, like, part of that, part of that, like, the ice was, like, leaking out, hanging out, so I just, uh, so I put those studs on as, like, a way to, Keep it, you know, insulated. Freeze-wise. Anyways. Anyways. And, uh, the legs and the arms, I kept them the same because, uh, back then, I just wanted to focus on, like, the torso and the head. Now, when looking at this minifigure, I do feel the need to, like, uh, like, uh, modify, uh, modify the, all of this minifigure in general. And sort of, like, uh, really make it look like the Arkham series. Anyways, I'm gonna have to look at a lot of photos of it, but, uh, that's definitely one of my goals. My right, goals to make this more like Arkham Mr. Freeze. Mr. Freeze. I'm gonna keep the helmets, but I'm gonna modify the helmets. Helmets, so I'll leave it to you at that. Now then, how about we move on to our next minifigure, shall we? Okay, I honestly did not realize until I actually picked this minifigure up, but the face is kind of damaged. But here he is, Scarecrow, another one of my favorite villains. And as you can tell, he's based off of the Arkham Asylum version. I was trying to go for the Arkham City version back when I made this guy, but I never found 
but back then I was like inexperienced of like making my own decal set, and I didn't find any like Arkham uh, Arkham Knight decals of Scarecrow. So I went with Arkham Asylum version. Uh, now I plan to update it and then make some changes. For starters, like I kind of need to replace the face because it is slightly damaged, unfortunately. Uh, the torso, yeah, I think I'll probably change it. And they change it to like again match it up more of like uh, Arkham uh, Arkham Knight version because he's kind of creepier. Uh, the hood though, this was like one of my first one of my first experiments of like making custom hoods. Uh, it didn't go well because this thing is made of Play-Doh, and you can tell this is like not completely well painted. And the back, uh, it's not good. Wait, what torso did I use? Oh man, it's been forever. I forgot, like, what torso I used. I just grabbed a brown torso. I didn't care what was on the back. I cared about what was on the front. Might be Anakin Skywalker, maybe? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Again, I haven't touched this in a while, so it's just like, what did I do again? Uh, the legs are regular. Regular, because again, I didn't really care about, like, uh, messing around with the legs. Uh, the arms, I kept the arms the same. But, uh, at the hand, it looks very familiar, because... This was one like one of my first experiments of like uh, taking the claw off and super gluing it on. This is supposed to like represent like his syringe, you know, like his syringe claws. Now I can make something, and now I feel like I can like either a modify these claws or b scrap them and do like my own custom, uh, some like syringe hands. Because I really like that. Because because uh, I always find that found that as like a creepier way to like induce you know, like fear toxin. And speaking of fear, he's got like this big scythe. That this wasn't like the original scythe. Like the first scythe I want, I made for Scarecrow, like that I wanted to give him, to give him was like the classic scythe. That, I don't know how to describe the sword and everything, but after going on a camping trip, a uh, camping trip like back when I was in Boy Scouts. That's yeah, but that is a whole another story for another video. And, you know, I brought, uh, I stupidly brought the scythe with me and then lost the scythe, <laughs> the scythe on a camping trip. So now it's long gone. Uh, the rest of this minifigure though. There you know, as you can see, like, he's got... And the second scythe... Wait, uh, I'm getting off track. I'm sorry. Ah! <laughs> Anyways, uh, the scythe that I originally went... I then second went, uh, went through. It was, like, one of those, like, curved swords. Or it's, uh, it was, like, a pirate sword sort of thing. Or anything. But I thought that had, like, a crow's, like, beak. And beak, and I thought that would be good. But I felt like, oh, I can do more. So I stepped it up again and made it into the current version I have now. And I wanted to go ahead with this blade, because it kind of gave off, like, that scary effect. If that's, like, if this was induced with nightmare toxin. Uh, with fear toxin and everything. Everything. So, the weapon, I'm kind of fine with. The rest of the figure, you know, it's decent. It's not great. It's not horrible. It's decent. Decent. But I do plan to change it, uh, make some repairs, and definitely go ahead and a new route with this minifigure. So, how about we move on to a minifigure that I'm actually, actually not too shameful of. Okay, so here's one minifigure that I am not too ashamed of, but uh, still a little bit though, is Poison Ivy. And the decal printing that I found, uh, this I am proud of. I'm proud of the uh, the original artist. Again, these decals are not mine. They belong to other people. Their links, links will be in the description below. So they did a, uh, they did an excellent job on these decals. These decals. And actually for the first one out of all of them, uh, there's front and back ones. And so like the Arkham City design, and I really thought this was like really, really cool. Poison Ivy was definitely a minifigure that I wanted for a long time, and now, and like, uh, when I started customizing, one of the minifigures that I wanted to make was Poison Ivy. Ivy, and the legs, ah, uh, the legs, once again, it's the legs that I have a problem with. Oh, with, I don't remember, like, how I proceeded with the legs. I think I might have either, A, had the green as the base, or maybe the crimson for the base, but it's not fully accurate anymore. Anymore, so, again, this is definitely something that I kind of want to fix now. X now, and like the arms, again, the same, and they're a little bit brittle. Uh, there are two different vines on here, like this is like the classic vine. Uh, but this one though, I got this again at Brick Fair, and I found like these, these like plant pieces, and I thought like, ooh, those will look cool for Poison Ivy. Poison Ivy. So, again, I'm not entirely ashamed of this minifigure, but I know I can improve on this one. And one of the things that I really want to improve on is like, maybe like, do like some kind of flowers in her hair, to like, again, show more of that plant life. Maybe... Do like a different hairpiece entirely, or I can work with this. What do you guys think? Should I change the hairpiece altogether, or should I just like keep the hairpiece, but uh, try to add some flowers into it? Let me you know, let me know in the comments below on uh, what you think you think should happen to this one. But uh, how about we move on to like one of the more successful DC minifigures figures that I had and that I did in the later years. 
So next up is Two-Face, uh, one of the more recent, uh, like, DC villains that I made. And this one, this one was, like, really starting to, like, show of, like, my progression throughout customization. So, again, this is, like, the Arkham, uh, Arkham City sort of version. Like, of course, like, got the, like, the damage suit and everything. And everything. And the face. Hey, so the person who made this to Cal, like, really did an awesome job of capturing, like, that Two-Face look. Of having, like, of course, like, uh, one side the normal face and then the other side that scary... Or, like, uh, burnt half face. So, like, one of the things that I definitely did is just, like, I wanted to do it in a way for where, like, it could definitely show, like, the double sides. Like, as we've seen in, like, the movies and the games of how, like, uh, Two-Face has, like, half hair and then the other half's, like, completely cut off and really burnt off. So, one of the things that I'm gonna do is that, like, I'm gonna go back and, like, paint this, paint this to, like, uh, really add that that sort of effect, and, like, uh, give the legs, like, a new coat of paint. Like, I'm not too ashamed of the legs. The they're kind of fine, like, the black one is okay. Uh, the white one, though, the white needs a repaint, because this was back when I was dealing with one of the arch enemy, like, with, like, one of my arch enemies in customization. White Tampera, Tampera paint. And in case you guys have not heard me say it, Tampera is an enemy. It is a huge pain to do, because it's designed to practically break off. So, uh, for future customizers, customizers who are looking... Who are wondering like uh, what sort of paints can we use? I recommend you use like acrylic uh, or some other kind of paint. Don't choose tempera. Tempera, the stuff will. Uh, you'll have to apply a lot of coats just to get some and some to cover up the whole piece. Enough coats to make it for where like it won't fall off. A lot. So if you're looking for like a good paint, I recommend you do acrylic, like or other paints or some other paints, uh, other paint materials out there. But otherwise, stay away from tempera. Just stay. Stay. <laughs> and, like, the... Like, he's got, like, a pirate gun. This was not the original gun. He originally had, like, a revolver. But uh, the revolvers, uh, I had, like, very few of them. So, oh, I think I might have... They're either in, like, a Big Bang set. So, in Big Bang set that I have. Or in, like, like a, a supernatural trunk for the weaponry. But I decided to go with, like, one of the pirate guns that I just had lying around. You know, to sort of, like, at least sort of match up uh, what he's carrying. It's not the best one. This one, I will admit. And the coin, though. The coin is now something that I kind of want to do. Do, because this is just, like, a regular coin. Because, again, this was, like, back when I was first starting out. So, I had, so I had like, uh, little creativity when it, come, and when it came to, like, some of these minifigures. Figures. So, again, this isn't something that I'm too shameful of. But this, yeah, but this is another one of those that uh, I can really improve more. So, how about we go on to the last minifigure and actually one that I am proud of. So, our last minifigure is one that uh, I'm not too ashamed of, you know, and that is Deathstroke. Like, this was, like, like, one of the first ones, but not, like, the really, really first ones. Uh, as you can tell, like, the printing off of this one, the reason why the colors don't really look fully the same is because, like, back then I printed this off and my printer was running low on ink. Now, today, I could, like, reprint this and, like, fix this. But, uh, one of the reasons that I'm proud of this one was it's kind of, like, it was one of the experiments uh, that I was... Yeah, sorry. That I experimented back then on, like, some of the faces. Because with this one, if it looks familiar, it's actually a Tony Stark head. Like, uh, like I used the minifigure head in your head, and he originally had the helmet, but I took the helmet off because I will try, because I wanted to try something with the helmet. So, uh, the helmet's gone. Uh, it's gone, or at least, like, somewhere upstairs that I have no idea where. Uh, the armor... Remember, is based off of the Nexo Knight, which I refuse to watch. I have no motivation to watch it. Watch it. But I got, like, the minifigure set. Originally, back then, I just got the hairpiece, like, for Riku, when I was doing Kingdom Hearts. And, like, this whole, like, chest piece, I cut off the front of it, because I thought that looked stupid. Stupid. And, like, kept some of the armor of it. So, the armor, I, you know, planning on replacing. But the weapons, I want to keep intact. So, like, he's got, like, his sword here. And he's got, like, a sniper rifle. It's already... To, like, really match up with Deathstroke. And he's got, like, of course, like, the two guns. Ooh, guns. I think these were originally supposed to be, like, uh, Black Widow guns. And actually, wait. No, never mind. These actually were Deadpool guns. Little guns that I had. And I, had. I just realized that now because I made this long before I started on Marvel. Marvel. And, like, the hairpiece. Hairpiece. It's kind of based off of, like, in the uh, Arrow CW version. Which I honestly have to say, like, that that stroke is probably, like, one of the more cooler versions of it. So I think I might try, I try to, try to do that death stroke instead. Instead. So again, I am not ashamed, well, not too ashamed of this minifigure. Pretty much this one and Joker are, like, the one minifigures that I'm not too ashamed of. 
enough, but I can really improve on, like, this whole showcase. And that's what this whole showcase is about. And about. But if you guys, like, find, uh, are, oh, but if you guys are, like, okay with these minifigures, that's cool. Mm. And that's cool. It's just my opinion about one of my own work. All right. But anyways, how about we show you guys, like, the teaser to get you, like, really excited for the projects we are coming out next year. All right, gentlemen. So we need some projects to come up uh, for next year for 2019. So what are some ideas we can use? I know. How about since the first wave did a successful, how about we do another one of Five Nights at Freddy's? People really seem to love the horror genre, so let's go ahead and do that one. Hmm, you're right. You're right. Oh, yeah, another wave of that should be good, but uh, we're gonna need some more. Uh, we're gonna need some more ideas in order to boost our series up. So, what's some more ideas that we should come up with, men? S ooh, ooh, ooh. What about? What about we go ahead and do like the Overwatch thing? Like we we'll first do like reviews of the whole sets and everything. Like we get the sets and then we get the minifigures and you're sending them out on those guys. It's foolproof. Yeah, you're on to something. I think it actually uh, might work. Might work. Uh, but we still need some more ideas. What else can we do, guys? Well, for our ideas, how about we do like some of the video games and more on like TV shows. As movies and like uh, Kingdom Hearts, uh, more on CW stuff. Uh, I personally think that uh, all of our like video game stuff, video game showcases that we do, and some of stuff are very good. So we should go ahead and do some of those showcases. Yes, yes, yes. I can see that happening. Happening. These are all good ideas, but I feel like we need something to experiment with fabrics, with other materials of sorts. So what do you think would be a good showcase for us to try to, ex to experiment with more materials like that? Well, we could pick out a TV show. Have it centered around the classic whole, like, people get stuck into a video game. Video game, and... Game, and they die in the game, they die in real life. In order to escape, they gotta complete the game. But if people try to take off, like, some of the gear they're addicted and they're hooked up to in the real life, in life worlds, uh, they will die too. That has to be one of the most overly complicated ideas for something that I have ever heard. We have to freaking try it! And that does it for this episode of Memory Lane when it comes to LEGO Arts. Uh, again, I'm not super satisfied with these minifigures. I'm planning on, like, redoing these things, but it's sort of, like, why I did this video. It's gonna be, like, a before and after sort of thing. Sort of thing. So, two of them I'm pretty satisfied with. The other ones, I know I can really improve on that. So, be sure to keep your eyes and ears peeled for that one. And if you know, like, uh, I like the, I like what I'm playing off for the showcases, aces, and the teaser you saw, feel free to comment below on what, uh, what you think. I just think, and if you're looking forward to it. Uh, I'm planning on doing, like, uh, at least, like, one or two more showcases this year for December. Or December. I'm currently working on another Bendy showcase. Okay, sit. And I'm working on something for Christmas. Christmas. Something christmas theme related. One of those things. I'm also currently in the middle of some other Let's Play series. Um, my nice series. Like, if you guys saw, I started on Ripto's Rage. Uh, still working a little bit through Undertale. Tell, and now that I defeated, like... You know, like the 1,000 Heartless battle through Kingdom Hearts 2, I'll be continuing on that with, um, with that one. But there's a high chance that uh, when July comes around, when Kingdom Hearts 3 is released, I just might stop those series together and begin Let's Plays on Kingdom Hearts 3. Kingdom Hearts 3, because that's a given. That's a given. That whole series is going to be given on that one. But if you guys know like what the teasers are, teasers are feel free to comment below what you think, uh, what you think about them. At them, and uh, if you guys like want to see more projects like this in the future, future or more videos, uh, be sure to uh, be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell for notifications. It really, really helps us like work on more, uh, work on more projects, expand our channel for let's plays and other sort of fun, or fun content uh, that we have in store. But for now, though, thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you liked it, hit that like button, comment below what you think, share this to your friends, subscribe to me on YouTube, follow me on Twitch, and here's a half of the road. Ow! Thank you guys, and I'll see you next time when I see Moon Rises!